Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be reviewing Survive the Night by Riley Sager. This book is a much anticipated release from Riley Sager. I read his book Home Before Dark last year and really liked it. So when I heard he was coming out with a new book this summer, I was like, really, I was, I was all for it. And like literally I think the day after it came out, I went and bought it and I was so excited to read it. Survive the Night follows a young college student named Charlie Jordan and she's looking for a ride home from her university in New Jersey to her home in Ohio. Two months prior to the events of the novel, her roommate was murdered by a serial killer, and she feels really guilty over the circumstances surrounding her friend's death, and so she's really desperate to leave campus, just kind of get away from the scene of where it happened, get some space, clear her head, and it's the middle of the semester, so she doesn't have a lot of options for getting home, she doesn't have a car of her own, and this also takes place in 1991, so she doesn't have a cell phone, there's no Facebook ride board or anything, she has to go to her campus's physical ride board and like pin a request for a ride with her phone number and stuff on it in order to get a ride home. This is where she meets a man named Josh Baxter, who she assumes is like an older grad student, and he is also looking to drive to Ohio and looking for a passenger to bring along and split the ride costs. So all this is how she finds herself in Josh's car in the middle of the night on a nine hour road trip home. And the longer she is in the car, the more suspicious she is that Josh is one, not who he says he is, and two, possibly the serial killer that murdered her friend. This might be kind of an unpopular opinion, but I really liked this book. I know Katie Coulson hated it, and I know Gabby from Gabby Reads had really mixed feelings on it, but I thought this book was a really fun thriller. I don't really read a lot of thrillers because I'm so rarely like caught by surprise or excited by one. I recently just read The Maidens by Alex Michaelides and I thought I would love that book, but it was really just kind of meh for me and the final like twist really like, I don't know, I just didn't buy it. So this one, I was really delighted by the fact that like I bought it and I had a lot of fun reading it. There were moments where I would like put it down and go, oh my God. And that's really the experience I'm looking to have when reading thrillers. I thought there was an incredible amount of tension in that it takes place in just a single night. And I have seen some reviews that complain it's a little bit repetitive. There's several moments where Charlie could find herself like escaping the car and she doesn't. And it is a little maddening, but I also think like you really have to set your 2021 lens of the world aside, I think to fully be invested in this book because things were different, you know? Again, there's no cell phones, there's no Facebook. You can't like stalk this guy on the internet and see that he checks out. In 2021, we have true crime documentaries. We have true crime podcasts. I think it's easy for someone in our sort of day and age and our generation to look at the situation and think that our protagonist, Charlie, is just an idiot ignoring all these red flags. But like, it was a little different back then. There's plenty of documented cases in which a woman gets in the car with a stranger and it doesn't seem like a good idea objectively, but maybe we were just a little bit more trusting back then. Also, like, it's never a victim's fault for being gaslit and manipulated into a bad situation. And Charlie herself experiences this on several occasions. So I th again, I think it's easy to say that she's kind of a dumb protagonist, but I think that's also ignoring a lot of real life sort of evidence that backs up her behavior. Also, women are often made to feel guilty if they're not like nice to strangers. Like they tend, and Charlie even experiences this in the novels, like she doesn't want to hurt Josh's feelings by airing her suspicions about him because what if she's wrong and she's just being a jerk? And that's something that predators use to their advantage. So again, I think to, call our protagonist dumb is to ignore a lot of real life evidence of this happening. And I don't think you'd ever call a real life victim dumb for going through all this. So I don't know, I bought it. I thought it was realistic. One piece of criticism that I have seen about this novel that I do agree with is that the mental health representation is not like 100%. Uh, our protagonist, Charlie, experiences like cinematic hallucinations following the death of her parents when she was a child. And she's often aware that they're hallucinations when she's happy, when they're happening to her. 
but it does sort of make her memory of certain events really hazy and she ends up sort of in this situation where she doesn't really trust herself which is why she trusts Josh at a point a certain point and we're never really like told what exactly it is that she's suffering from like is she schizophrenic does she have like traumatic PTSD that like makes these hallucinations occur I don't know it was used as a plot device which is like not my favorite it's never really like elaborated on or properly resolved and they sort of just like very conveniently disappear at the end of the novel <laughs> so that was not my favorite but overall I liked Charlie as a protagonist and I can see why Riley Sager did that in order to sort of disorient the reader and kind of make them doubt what's happening along with Charlie I just don't think it was handled in the most delicate way I also do wish this book felt a little bit more 90s aside from Nirvana being on the tape deck and the fact that there's no cell phones and that Charlie has to use a payphone in a couple of situations we don't really feel like we're in that era and I don't know what necessarily would have helped that because they're literally in a car for like 70% of the novel but I think if it had felt a little bit more of that era people would buy sort of the situation a little bit better it is easy to forget that this not is not like a modern sort of novel or a modern setting so yeah I don't know I'm not a writer so I don't know what he could have done to improve upon that but it didn't always feel like it was 1991 in the novel but yeah like I said I really enjoyed this novel I gave it a four out of five on Goodreads I had a really fun time reading it. It was a thrill from beginning to end. I couldn't put it down. I think I read it in the course of two days and that was literally just because like I had to go to sleep for work the night before and I could not stay up and read it even though I really wanted to. So definitely let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought of this book. I know it has kind of controversial ratings. It's a little all over the place. You either love it or you hate it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and maybe we can have a discussion about it. I think that'd be fun. Also feel free to follow my socials down in the description box below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and have a great day. Bye.